Right, here we are, back at Liz's garage. And in front of us here is yet another Kawasaki Z650. Yes. It's not my Kawasaki Z650, thank God, it's somebody else's. It's Drew's. Drew's, And we saw yeah. this about a year ago when it was just all sort of had its body work in place, which I'll put a photograph up now. And finally, it's time has come to be rebuilt and restored. But it's not going to be restored back to standard. No. In fact, this bike is not standard already. It's got um, a GPZ 750 engine in it already, yeah. which is put back in the day. Yeah. Now, Drew is very, uh, very attached to this bike. He's had it for a long time. A long time, A long time, yeah. like, you know, 35, 40 years. So it's going to have a complete makeover. And in fact, I think the only thing that's going to stay the same is probably the frame. And even that's going to be braced braced and modified or whatever yeah. so if we now just go through pretty much what's going to happen to this bike which you're about to start to do now you're going to start by taking off the bodywork and i'm just halfway through stripping it stripping it completely the, yeah the wiring's here look oh, sort of knackered yeah so I'll start at the back and work your way forward yeah just working my way forward slowly and right uh, so what is going to happen then to this bike ultimately um well, Drew supplied a second bike, which had a G, uh, which was a chopper, which had a GPZ 750 turbo engine in it. Right. That engine was removed from that bike and um, renovated by a company down south. It's now 810 cc from 750. From 750 up to 810 turbo forged turbo pistons. Um, it's all wrapped up over there in the corner of my workshop on the got, trolley. Got a bigger turbo on it. Yeah, the, the, the common thing with the old GPZ 750 turbos was to fit a slightly bigger turbo. I think the original one was slightly too small, I believe. Now, as I remember, the original GPZ turbo made about 112 brake. Not sure. Yeah, well, and this thing up. makes about 65 or thereabouts when it was new, a standard Well, that's, it, that's a 650, yeah. yeah. 650, so that's almost double. But this bike's going to be even more than that. I don't know how much more, but it's going to be more. Well, you can get a lot of power out yeah, of yeah. uh, the engine. The engine's strong. Giving the really strong engine seat, you know, they can take huge amounts of. You power. can get 150, 200 horse out of yeah, out yeah. of a nicely set up one. Yeah. But when you do that, of course, you've got to then modify everything else to take the power. Correct. Which is what you'll be doing. Yeah. So we go go through it very quickly. Then the frame's going to be braced. Here yeah, there. it's all going to be strengthened to handle the extra power. Right. Um, we have discussed putting a top engine mount on, like on my Z1. Yeah. Yes. Which is the one thing that makes them handle a lot better. Which is a mount which goes from the top. Yeah, the on mine I used Harris Harris nuts here on the centre four yes. cylinder head. Yeah. And then I made a bracket and, and welded tubes in the frame and uh, oh, bolted a bracket yeah. here. Yeah. And it stops the frame from twisting. Yeah. And that one modification in fact, my mark improves the handling no end. Yeah, that's, that, I did yeah. that on your, yes. what is now your bike. Yes. Yeah. So that's the, uh, the frame. What about suspension? Um, is having a ZX7 front end upside down, upside down forks, yeah. yeah. and the front wheel is over here somewhere. Yes. Um, and Jeff will have to make a nice set of billet yokes to get the ride, the, the height right to the front. I think it's going to be a step top yoke. Yeah, because the forks are much shorter on, on the, the, the 750. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Somehow make it longer. That's right. It's different ways of doing it, but one way is to do a step top yoke. Yes. Which is what we're going to go for. Which is probably what we'll do. Yes. And obviously, um, the offset on the yokes is, is not as great as it is on these. So on full lock, the forks can hit the tank, so that all has to be addressed as well. Yeah, I mean, these forks are only about where they are, 36. 35, yoke. I think they are. Yeah. yeah. Whereas the tops of upside down forks are like 50 odd, aren't they? 55, 56, whatever. Yeah, yeah, upside so down is a 50, 55. So you fit the same sort of yokes or style of yokes with your upside down forks, on full lock it just smashes into the tank, which Correct. is good, so that's got to be sorted out. So the lock stops have to yeah. be altered, yeah. And in fact, now I think about it, uh, Jeff has made a set of uh, yokes, step yokes, for another GPZ, sorry, another Z650 that was still on, on a cafe racer. Williams. Williams bike. William Morris. So, um, I'm, I'm actually, we featured that a long time ago. But yeah, I rebuilt the engine on Yeah, yeah, one. I'll put up a photograph of that, it looks really nice. So that's the sort of thing that this bike's going to get. Then at the back end, again, all change. Yeah, all this period 80s uh, stuff, the, yeah. the old... The Vido Moto and... Yeah, all the desirable stuff for now for people that are doing... Yeah. Uh, they CMA models. wheels, I think. CMA wheels. Yeah, yeah. The day, back in the 80s, that would have been cutting edge. All Marzocchi for All the stuff that was cutting edge back in the day is it's now going. 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 But it's keeping it, by the way. Um, he's seen my bike 
which is now your bike. Yeah. He's seen the ZRX swinging arm. Yeah. And he likes it. Likes it. So he's, he's bought a, a 1200 swinging arm here. Yeah, it's in the box then. And we've, we've managed to find a wheel, rear wheel. Yeah. So the uh, it's just a matter of... It's going to be ZRX 1200. Complete ZRX 1200. Oh, and nice. you've sold him your old shocks. Yes, I had some ZRX shocks that uh, came off... The Mark II. Right, came right. off the Mark II. But that's now got different shocks, so... Yeah, yeah. The reason being that they were too long on that bike, but hopefully they'll be okay in this one. Well, originally they were off the Mark II. Yes. And you put uh, the... the um, Maxton. Maxton. Very expensive shot. custom made shots, yeah. Correct. So the ZX shots were spare, so it's been recycled back. That's what you do, and it's now going to Drew's bike. Going so. now to turn to Drew's, yeah. Yeah, so that's what's happening now. So you may have started on it, I think, last week. So, yeah. I know at the moment, actually, we've actually crammed full of Kawasaki's in here. There's one, two, three, four, and five. We've got spits everywhere, so I think you want to get... One behind the camera as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> one behind the camera, yeah. We won't mention that one. GP700R, that's been restored. Um, so that's just waiting to go to its owner at some point. And this one, well, it's just going to be a lot of work in it. Luckily, you don't need to worry about the engine here, because that's going to come out and... Yeah, that's one job I'm not going to do. Just... <laughs> You know, slot the engine in once the frame's been braced and powder coated, yeah. and then all the ancillaries and everything can be started yeah. to be bolted on. Yeah, by the way, a set of X12 swing arm back end will not fit directly into this frame. You've got to do quite a lot of work to make it fit. It has been done. Jonathan yes. did it on yes. his uh, 650. Yeah, and I've done it. Whatever. Sorry. Yeah, and I did it with yours, so yes. yeah. um, it can be done. Luckily, the set of X12 swing arm, its bearings are inset into the so yeah, which, bit, so which means you can narrow it. Yeah, you can narrow it and not affect yeah. the bearings, so it makes life a lot easier. Yeah. Plus, they'll still look really nice. So, yeah. So, that's what's happening with Drew's future turbo bike. And we'll come back at some point in a week or two when more work's done on this bike. But at the moment, things are pretty busy in here. And yes. in fact, because it's pretty busy in here, there's a couple of bikes in here that are quite interesting. So, even though this video is about Drew's bike, Drew's turbo bike, we'll just turn the camera around and look at the bike that's sitting right in front of us here. Right, so I'm behind the camera because there's no room anywhere else. So what we're looking at here, Les, is a Kawasaki Z300 six-cylinder bike yes. that you spent uh, a lot of time with, and you're trying to get it to run just perfectly, Yeah. but it's having issues, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so we're, we're having issues with it, trying to get it to, to run correctly. So what is the problem? It runs, doesn't it? It starts um, and goes. It did run well when, it, when, I, when I first did the restoration on it three years ago, Yeah. Um, and I took it out for a ride, mm -hmm and literally did about 120 miles on the bike and yep. the last couple of miles mm -hmm. it dropped onto five cylinders mm -hmm. uh, and on removing the plugs number one and number two was sooty black so I knew that the, the first carburetor had flooded mm -hmm. um, it had never had the carbs stripped and rebuilt ever in, in, ever it's whole life yeah so it, I decided to put new, three new carburetor kits in mm -hmm. did that over the winter come to fire it up the following spring um, and it just run horrible and it's never run right since and I, 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 you know I've, I've come to the point where I thought I'd, I'd have to put all the original carburetor bits back in mm -hmm. but uh, I found two of the ignition coils were cracked yeah, which is a common thing on these yeah. um, and the upgrade is to fit Honda coils would you believe right. looking at the forums um, so I've done all that and uh, it runs better, but it's still not right. Not right. Um, I assumed wrongly, uh, talking to the customer, that it, it had had a top end rebuild or it had some cylinder head work done on it in the past. So I naturally assumed that the valve that clearances okay. would yeah. have been checked. Um, but uh, the other day when he came round, he said, no, it's never it's never had the top cover off. Okay. So now uh, this is done what? 40 the odd? original speedometer read 48,000 miles, right. which the speedometer was knackered. Yes. So, so we fitted a new speedo yeah. of an American model. Right. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm now in the, in the process of uh, doing a compression test and checking the valve checking clearance. the valve clearances. Yeah. So this is a six cylinder bike. It's yes. got two valves per cylinder. Yes. But interestingly enough, it's only got three carburetors. Three twin jokes. Yeah. Look at that. So that's quite interesting. But the later models had injection, didn't they? They did. Yeah. But this is an earlier model. This yeah. is an A2, the second model. Yeah. yeah. Shaft drive, big old heavy thing. Massive 1980, fuel. this one. Yeah, massive fuel tank. So Lovely since, thing to ride. Yeah. So in about 40 odd years, it's never had its top end checked. No. no so uh, I'm going to address that now. No. Yeah, and then I come along and get in your way. Okay, so that's uh, one of the things that you're working on right now. Yes. Obviously, we've got, also got uh, this, my, what, my green 650 next to you, my Mark II behind here, and over there, under cover, 
is a GPZ 900R which has been completely restored and has the top gun body top work. gun body work, paint work, yeah, yeah top it's just waiting for the customer to come along and pick it up he's paid for it, it's just not been collected yeah, so again busy, busy, busy and if you look around there's loads of boxes of parts everywhere so it makes it very difficult to sort of work on a bike when I'm you know, wait, uh, yeah, I'm waiting for a friend who owes me a favour to come and fit me a shelf along this back yeah, wall yeah, for, so for I can put storage. boxes for storage yeah, just behind you you've got even more body work hanging up yeah that yeah. one's for your um, drag, is it the drag That's star? That's the Italjet Italjet Dragster. Yeah, you've got a drag star next That's the old knackered body work, and they're the replacements that are in good order, that I just want repainting. Repainting, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's all gold. Another so, project. Another project, yeah, we've yeah. got too many. Right, so there you go. There's a Kawasaki Z, this under the monster thing. God knows what it weighs, about what, 650 pounds, something like that, I don't know. Uh, I'm not but sure. Sitting on it, you've got this massive fuel tank, you feel like you're on a bloody elephant, but... Uh, for its that. size it handles really well yeah, i'm sure it does yeah. it does right so that's what you've been up to and we'll come back at some point when you've done some more work on drew's turbo yeah yeah just been told off because we're not signed off by saying cup of tea and stuff. now it's time to end because it's time for a cup of tea correct so it is time for a cup of tea so we're ending it here and as i say we'll continue the video or perhaps if this is a bit long enough we'll make this one standalone video but this is this kind of introduction to the work going on on drew's bike drew's bike yeah and we'll come back at part two and part three and part four as the work progresses yeah. on drew's bike right so that's it and now it really is time for cup of tea brilliant right so here we are again back in Liz's workshop and he's sitting surrounded by bits of Kawasaki Z650 and new bits that are going to be on that frame at some point in the future. Right, yeah. So you've got here the GPZ engine that you've now removed from the yeah, frame. Yeah, that was a 750 engine which yeah. was in this 650 bike, yeah. So is that going to go back to Drew or is that going to just go somewhere else? Um, well, it's up for sale, so... Yes, yes. Yeah. I would be tempted by it, but I've got, I've got no use for it right now, so... Uh, well, there's a friend of Jeps who races some yes. fit, Hercule 750. He, might be, Mark, it, he yes. might be interested in it. Okay, great. The next to you, you've got a new part, which is from a Kawasaki ZXR 1200. No, ZRX. Z sorry, I was it's getting... close. It's close, you know what I meant. Yeah, ZRX 1200. Know. Yeah, the... the, the Gray swinging arm out of a ZR yeah, 1200. It looks very nice. That's not going to be modified to fit yeah. this frame. I bought that because you see in the one in the back of my Mark II. Correct. Which he really likes, and it's a good good reason for liking it. And of course, it needs to be modified, it needs to be uh, reduced in. in uh, yeah, the width. This width the looks, this need, need, needs to be narrowed down. Yeah. Uh, to fit the might, I'm not actually measured the width of this compared to the frame yet. Yeah, it, it might not need a narrow window. Oh, it does, believe me, it does. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Because I've got the same. I would imagine. It, I would imagine it will. Because yeah. we narrowed. We narrowed the the one that I put in the Mark II. Yeah. Now. And I narrowed the same one that's in the same frame on my 1170. Yeah. Yeah. And then next to it, of course, is the frame itself. Yeah. Looks all pretty good. It's a bit of rust here and there, but no, nothing it's, too, too it's bad. It's actually been plastic coated, yes. which was a, a thing to do back in the day. A long, obscure coating that was never good because mm -hmm. the water got behind it, and as you yes. can see on some of the parts it's the inside lifting. of the frame here, it's lifting. It, yeah, it peels it's off, off yeah. and the rust gets the water mm -hmm. gets trapped behind it. Yeah. Now, one rust spot on these bikes is the ears, so called ears where the rear pillion pegs go yes because it's like two thin sheets of metal that are welded together and it's a bit of a rust strap the water yeah, gets behind they're, it they're coming off right okay because on my in fact on that one on, on the f2 that's just over there uh, that had that same problem and it had to be repaired by triple s before they they um yeah, we, didn't, we didn't know about it no until they no no to blast it yeah but you're gonna zip them off because when you fit the wider swing arm they might hit the swing arm, I think. Um, well, they're coming off anyway. Okay. He he's, got, he's, he's, he's putting race, well, he wants race to sets. put uh, one race sets on. Right. He's seen what's on my supercharged bike, he likes it, so yes. he's bought some. In fact, they're behind me somewhere. Okay. they work. Yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised because I thought he might go with the uh, ones he's already got on the bike because he's got Rask. Well, they were probably dated and they had yes, all yes. this horrible linkage. Isn't yes, yeah. They were really old school and yeah. not very so nice. You got to weld on some new mounts then on the frame to take those. Well, he's in his mid 50s, this guy, and I've said, look, you've got to look to the future. You don't really want rear sets on it because you want to be thinking of comfort in mm -hmm. the next four, five, ten years yeah. of riding. You know, especially if you want to do any distance work, I, I would stick with standard footrest myself. 
Yeah. So is he going to have real rear sets on this bike, or is he going to set them to be well, roughly where? We've, we've basically eyed up the rear sets against your F2. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and there's no real way we can mount them um, off lugs behind the frame tubes here. Yeah. Because of the angle of the frame tube, mm -hmm. the rear sets will be pointing down. Right. On the R1, the, the tubes are quite vertical, mm -hmm. and the two mounting points are at six and twelve o'clock. Yeah. So to put them on a tube that angles backwards, the, it angles the rear set down. Mm -hmm. So I've said really the only way to fit them is to put them outboard of the frame, and then it starts to look a, look bit, a bit rubbish. Rubbish then. Yeah. So I've said either we get some different rear sets that are more akin to you know fitting on the frame. You can buy them. I mean, uh, you can buy yeah. them. A rear set with a with a with a built-in rear brake master cylinder mm -hmm. that will f sort of suit that angle of that yeah. frame tube. Tarosi make rear sets for that bike, just the same outside on, on my bike there. Yeah, but I mean, if you're I, cutting these ears off, these yes, mountain ears, you can make whatever you want, can you? You can put whatever you want on as yeah. long as the angle looks right. Yeah, yeah. So the other issue you've got that's is, another issue is, we've not, which I found it. with uh, mine with the rear sets is that you've got a problem with clearance for things like the side stand. When the side stand is up. It comes up where you want your feet to be, you know. So there are issues there. Yeah, well, on my supercharged bike, mm -hmm. when the stand is up, the top, the top of the side stand is just rubbing the the gear linkage yeah, rod. Yeah, yeah. So it's one of them sort of things where you got to mess about with. Rages. It's another little job I've not got yeah, around to yeah, address yeah, it. Yeah, it's a bit of a pain. Yeah. Anyway, those things will be coming along uh, at some point in the future when we see a bit more of this. So right now, then, I think you said tomorrow that frame's going off to Jeff's workshop. It's like with any any job a start like this the first thing to do is put it on a frame jig yes and make sure the frame is straight yes because you don't know it could have been no, crashed no, and twisted no. yeah. so the first thing to do is to make sure it's straight and jeff's got his frame jig so he can yeah, put it on so there so it's going to go on the frame jig and while it's there these ears are being cut off yeah there's also a redundant cast lug here for the brake rear brake master cylinder yeah, don't want that uh, i think this lug for the steering lock's going to come off right and various other little bits that we don't need. And it's going to be braced as well, of course. Well, I don't know yet. Not yet. Um, I'm going to have to look at uh, pictures of the bare turbo frame to see how that's been braced. Right. I think I might have to weld another tube across it. Yeah, here, I mean, I would imagine putting a tube there, maybe brace it. Well, putting a tube across it, it might not do anything. Uh, well, you can put also, I mean, on my 650, which is now has an 1170 motor in it, it's also got an extra tube at, at the back, behind. Well, I've already discussed this with yeah, the owner yeah, of this yeah, bike. Yeah. The, the one, the major thing you need to do on these old bikes is to put a top engine mount on. Yeah. That's the one thing that stops, that stops deflexing the frame mm -hmm. and makes them handle a thousand percent better. Yeah. Even the old AMA bikes in America used to, used, they used mm -hmm. to put some sort yeah, of yeah. top engine mount on the yeah, Z so, mount, so it's getting that. Z thousand. So that said, the 650 runs and actually handles a lot better than the original Z thousand. Yeah, and he's, he's not going to be bloody scratching on it. Knee down on it, yeah. You know, so yeah, but whether it'll lead. And I've also said if, you, if, it, if, we, if we put the same design of top engine mount on that I've got on my Z, these coil brackets would have to go. Yes. And then you've got the problem of where to mount the coils then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Under the seat, or, and then you've got HT leads that are bloody miles long. And yeah. Mine actually, on my 65170, my um, coils, they hang down rather than go up. Yeah. And it only just clears the can cover. There's not, a, there's not a lot of room, you know, it's a bit of a tight fit. You can on these older bikes run coil on cap, you know, oh, the, yes, the, yeah. the modern coil caps. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're quite easy to put on, and the, the, the wiring is all on there on the internet. Yes, yeah. It's quite easy to do, mm -hmm. uh, and it eliminates all that plug caps and HT lead nonsense. Yes, and yeah. Dampness getting in and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, well. that's another that's another option. Another option, right? And also, of course, out of shot right now, we have down here by my side. We've got the original. The original, the Jeep is a turbo motor that's been rebuilt. Yes, big bore, um, 810, 810 turbo. big turbo. Yeah, he's, 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 he's put the bigger turbo on, which was, yeah. as we've said before, is always yeah. the, the yes. problem with the 750 yeah. turbo. Yeah. The turbo original turbo was a little bit too small, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you put the bigger turbo on, the next size up, and it yes. unleashes a lot of power. Right, so if I now just move the camera just very quickly, da -da 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 -da. not hitting anything, I shouldn't, avoiding the Z650 600 next to me. Then down here, amongst all the boxes and bits and bobs. All the junk. Yeah. We've got this. And this is peeping out here. The 
nicely rebuilt GPZ 750 motor. Yeah. Now 810, blah blah blah. It's an 810 apparently. And and company down awesome. south did it. The finish actually south is really nice. I mean, the finish is excellent. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, the company that built that have now gone out of business. Yeah. So I, I think it's I think it's powder coated, isn't it? Or this case is a powder coated. I don't know what the finish is, but it's nice. Yeah, yeah. They've yeah. done a really quality job looking at the finish. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so hopefully the mechanical side of it is <laughs> it's good. just as good. Yeah. So anyway, that's great. So we'll see that at some point in the future when it goes into this frame it's here. A chassis. Yeah. Yeah. It's a bit obscured there by the thirteen hundred next to me. Well, um, like the owner wants ZX seven R forks upside down yes forks, which he's already got hasn't he we've bought them. they're quite short shorter than the original 650 mm -hmm. forks yes so you've got to make a step yoke to get the ride height the mm -hmm. same but if he uses forks from a later bike a more modern bike mm -hmm. with upside down forks we might be able to get the correct and i know forks. i know i've got a set of forks just like that the well, ones there's the Z900 RS. RS yeah. yeah they're the same length pretty much to the millimetre yeah. as the forks that came off the Z uh, well if you run shorter thousands. forks you've got to run a step yoke and to which run a step yoke you need a piece of billet aluminium this thing yes which gets which gives down. you a lot of money yes in order to carve out a step yoke yes that's right that's so right. the money you're saving keeping the old forks yeah. you could yeah you I, could got my, yokes and, yeah, uh, I got lucky and yeah I got lucky I got a brand new set of forks Brand new yokes to go with it, and brand new um, calipers. Yeah. All for a really good price. Yeah. Because I guess not at the time it, it was a good price. I've since been looking around for similar items in the old daft money. So yeah. Yeah. It's. Uh, so I'm happy to have that. So yeah. That, by the way, is going on my Z thousand A one project for next year. You've got too many projects. I have. I have. I'm trying to get them. Well, I've got five to finish, and two of them are in here now. One I finished. That's the B, the red B. Yeah. The next one is the Guzzi, yeah. which as of this morning is now running. The engine's running, but still a, lot, yes. a, long, a long way to go. Well done. But that's it's only took 11 years. But yeah, only 11 got years, there. but we got there, got there in the end. I think I'm becoming, I'm becoming quite expert on carburetors yeah. at the moment. I used yeah. to hate the button. You've become expert in juggling projects. Yeah, yeah. And after that, I want to go back to me 1170 and try and get the damn thing oil tight and get the, the outer yeah, sorted out. Yeah, that's something and nothing that. We I know, see. well you say that, but... It isn't. I, I yeah, we'll get it. our heads together on that. Well, sort yeah, of. yeah, well, so that's the next one. It'll be Hopefully, soon. all by the end of the year. And in fact, because I've not no room in the garage, it'll have to be done by the end of say September, October before the weather changes. So it's all go, mate. Well, you've so got go. to get one of your specials on the road for next spring. Oh yeah, because yeah. this is going to be built by next spring. Yeah. I've got my special, which I'm itching to ride. Yes. And I've got a, quite a lot of friends, and you've got quite a lot of friends who've yes, got specials. Yes, yes. And I've always, always wanted to organise a ride out. Yes. But you've got to be on a special. Special. Well, a garage, a garage built. I've got about eight specials. These are the, they all have problems. So that special, they're not finished. No. Well, <laughs> there are some that are finished, and some that just need work. Pitching. Work. Yeah. I mean, yeah. E even things like my. Uh, my big Harley, the Merch 131. Yeah. The insurance that ran out during COVID, and I thought, oh well, I won't bother with it. They'll, they'll tell me when it's run out, and I need to pay a bit more money. And they forgot, they didn't mention it, didn't tell me anything about it. So it's lapsed. So it got lapsed. Yeah. And it's like, oh god, here we go again. I've got to send them off records, details, photographs, and the price just goes up and up and up. So it's right now, it's just sat in a corner, and I've left it. Um, luckily, I think the old stuff is going to be a lot cheaper to insure. Yeah. Um, and some of them are more than 40 years old, so I don't need to have an MOT anymore and road tax, that sort of thing. I've never let my insurance lapse no. because of the theft, you know, on the policy. Yeah, yeah. You know, insurance against theft. Yeah, well, I've still, I've still got things like the Ducati. I thought it was taking a photo, right? Yeah. So well, like no, this speak. stupid bloody camera, if you don't touch it for like about 12 minutes, it's, oh, oh, you don't need to... It goes into a... It goes into like standby, 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 standby mode. Yeah. If you don't film it, it still says, oh, I'm going to shut down now. Yeah. And sometimes you don't hear it stop and you carry, it, you carry on filming stuff, it's like, where's that gone? It stopped. It stopped halfway through. Well, uh, now you're getting better, and yeah. I'm, I'm getting better after our problems. Yeah, illnesses. Well, um, yeah, I mean, I, would, I was just going to say actually that this year I've not ridden a bike at all. Well, that's because of good reason because at the start of the year I had a problem with my eyesight, and it got worse and worse. And by last last month I was pretty much blind in one eye. But two weeks ago I had an operation to sort it out. I had this weird cataract that grew really quickly. So I had, had my operation and got myself a new lens and I've not been allowed to do anything for two weeks. Correct. You're not yeah. allowed to bend over, yeah. you're not allowed to be anywhere dusty or dirty. No. You can't lift anything, blah, blah, blah. It's been really boring two weeks. But that two weeks ran out yesterday and that's why today I've been working on my guzzy and that's why today, thank God, I've got the damn thing running at last. But that's part of another different video. 
Yeah. So yeah, so I'm just going to go back in about two weeks' time for a checkup, but I think it's okay. Um, so hopefully I'll be okay to ride. I, mean, I can still drive, but as for having only one eye when you're riding the bikes, would be not such a good idea. Particularly when I've got bikes with like no mirrors <laughs> and no indicators. No, I've, been so, to, I've been to see my hospital, uh, my uh, consultant? consultant today at the hospital. Yeah. Um, it never ends, does it? Never ends. Yeah, you get old and things go wrong. But uh, once you turn sixty, mate, that's yeah, it. Yeah. Well, no, I read somewhere if you turn sixty and you're still alright, chances are you live okay to be eighty. So we got a good chance. Oh, mate. got a good chance. Sir. Got a good chance, thank God. Yeah. Right, and on that note, we'll end it here. And uh, so here's Drew's project. It's now taken apart, all in bits. And it's going to go away. Well, I've done my bit. It's up to yes, Jeff now. Yeah, Jeff can do his stuff. I know he's got an issue with his um, power supply, but... Uh, uh, I think he's addressed that. Okay, okay. So, uh, so it shouldn't take too long before it comes back. And are you going to do a dry build, or are you going to send it off to be powder coated first? Uh, you, you I said don't you, normally you don't do dry builds. No. True, but to be honest, this is such an unusual project. Personally, I would do a dry build. Well, all the, all the 650 bodywork is going to be standard. Mm -hmm. We're putting a seven, I'm putting a 750 wiring loom on it which so I'm not building the loom mm -hmm. uh, you know once it's on its wheels um, we put the yokes and the forks and the wheels in just to mm -hmm. see how it sits it can come apart and then obviously go Frame off the goes yeah just to trip, to trip less I don't like building the bike and then stripping it oh. all completely down yeah, it, to, de it depends how far from standard you go in this so is, my bikes are completely yeah, this is this isn't going far from standard no, no, is it so I think it'd be pretty safe you know yeah and then is it these ears actually pretty solid, even though the plastics coated if you could, if you off. could grind the wells through and cut them off, they would probably go on another 650 frame yeah, that yeah. had bad ones. Yeah, because they do go. You know, they could replace rotten ones. Yeah, but no. But you'd have to be careful getting them off. Yeah, anyway, that's not a, it's not our problem. No. Right, so with that then, we'll end it here because I know you've got to go and answer a phone call. Yes. So uh, we should continue this video. Oh, sorry, no, we won't. We'll continue this thread, this build thread, in part two in whenever time. We've got so much to show. Yeah, yeah, in a few weeks' time, a few yeah. months' time, who knows? Yeah. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching and cheers. Cheers. There you go.